Salve te omnes, gaudeo vos venise iterum, ad sessiones nostras noas ilineatas. Welcome, I'm Dr. Z. After working so much over the past year with Greek and Roman gods and religion, I'm excited to begin a new unit today with my Latin two students on Greek heroes, specifically asking some big questions about what it means to be brave, what it means to be a hero, focusing the unit on why is Hercules a hero to the Greeks and to the Romans? Is he a tragic hero? Why or why not? And what does that even mean? And by the end of this particular session, you will be able to explain how Hercules was similar to and different from modern superheroes. You'll be able to explain how someone in the ancient world would visualize, or rather what they would visualize when thinking about Hercules. You'll be able to name his parents, summarize the circumstances of his birth and infancy, and address why he had to perform his labors in the first place. Okay? In Kipiamos, let's get started. All right. Pars prima. Qui heros modernus, an quae heroes moderna, est carissimus, aut carissima tibi, quis valde tibi placet? We can't really be thinking about Hercules without thinking about his connection to modern superhero culture. Hercules est antiquus heros, non modernus, antiquus heros. Sed heroes aut superheroes sunt populares et celebrati hodie. Nonne? Certe, sine dubio, doctor, perge. Qui heros modernus an quae heroes moderna est carissimus aut carissima tibi? Quis valde tibi placet? Potesne identificare hos heroes et heroides infra? Bene. Quis est Vespertilio? Hmm. Identitas Vespertilionis. Ah, sine dubio, Batman. Ah, et quid de super viro? Quis est super vir? Quae identitas super viri? Bene, non difficilis est, super weir, superman. Ah, quid de gulone, quis est gulo? Scisne quisit? Ah, Wolverine, ah, bene, bene. Quaestio difficilis. Et fereus. Sine dubio, Iron Man, nonne? Ah, femina mirabilis. Quis est femina mirabilis? Ah, uh, Wonder Woman, nonne? Mm -hmm. Et Araneus. Bene, Araneus, Spider-Man. Quid de Ater Pardus? Siwe Ater Leopardus. Bene, Black Panther. Et Atra Widua. Ah, uh, Atra Widua? Tasha Romanoff, Minime? Ah, uh, Kerte. Black Widow. You got it. How did you do? All right. One thing I often ask my students to do at the beginning of this uh, unit is to talk a little bit about their own favorite superheroes and an exercise in presentational writing. Can you actually write a biography of your favorite superhero? Potesne scribere a biographiam brevem, no longer I said brevem, heroes carissimi. Exempli gratia, haec est biographia superviri. Super weir, quoque vocatur weir adamanteus, adamanteus, uh, sibi will steal, this is where we get words like adamant in English, uh, et finalis filius kryptonis, non eh? krypton, that's the name of his planet, in planeta kryptonis natus est, sub nomine cal el. Sed pater, cogebatur mitere infantulum cal el ad teram, ante quam krypton disploduit. Non eh? Infans inventus est a familia kansasensi et adolewit, right? How, what do we think adolewit means? Probably means grew up, right? Where we get words like adolescens. Adolewit sub nomine Clark Kent. Quamquam unis fuit maximas potestates habuit et cum crewit, uh, aut si cum cre, uh, crescaret ad virum, Habitavit apud metropolim, ubi laboravit ut scriptor pro commentario planeta quotidiana, the daily planet. None? Okay. 
So let's think about this for a moment. What do the superheroes actually have in common? They definitely have extraordinary powers or abilities. Sometimes they have extraordinary equipment, technology that allows them to do the amazing things that they can do. They often have or possess a strong moral code, and by that I mean a willingness to put one's own safety at risk to help others. A sense of responsibility, whether this responsibility is real or in some cases imagined. They also often have a backstory that's fraught with tragic elements, especially the loss of one's parents or community. And as we learn about Hercules, I invite you to think about how he is the same as and different from modern superheroes, and I expect that you will find that he is considerably more ambiguous. That's the big word. Hercules is very ambiguous. Uh, ambiguous in uh, Latine is doubtful. Really, if we break the word in half, what do we have? We have ambi, uh, ambo, something dealing with both, ambi in this case, both ways. If you're ambidextrous, you have two right hands, right? Both of your hands are right-handed. Agere is to do or to drive. So really, if you are ambiguous, you're kind of going in multiple directions. Hercules is often open to interpretation, his motivations, his activities. Really, he is possessive of both good and bad qualities. Is he a hero or is he a villain? That's actually more difficult to determine. So when we're thinking about sort of Hercules' big picture, let's understand right from the get-go that he is ambiguous. Okay. Another thing about mythology, and one of the best things about it, is the fact that it's malleable, right? I don't know if we know that word. The word malleable comes from the Latin word malleus. It's a hammer. If something is malleable, it can be shaped or molded. And indeed, the Fabula Hercules has been molded for a modern audience over and over again. So perhaps this is what we perceive, right? Hercules noster. Ah, okay. Hercules noster heros adest salve Hercule certe said unde de unde right donde de unde where he Hercules venit ex pellicula disniensi non eh est Hercules modernus non antiquus et sunt multi Hercules moderni exempli gratia non modo uh, Hercules ex pelliculis disniensibus ah bene Quis est, quis skit, quis sit, Steve Reeves, indeed. This is what Hercules looked like back in the 1950s. Uh, he was one of the original Mr. Olympia. Uh, yes, and then we have, yes, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yes, Gubernator Californiae Electus Bis a Populo. Um, back in 1970, this, believe it or not, was one of his first films, if not his first film, in which he really didn't speak any English, so it was dubbed almost entirely into English. Um, it has... It's known by two titles, either Hercules in New York, or uh, perhaps even a better title, Hercules Goes Bananas. Um, not really worth uh, picking up on Netflix, but I mean, I guess we're all stuck inside, so hey, you know, have fun. Um, ooh, that's, that is, that is a lot of man. That is a lot of oil. Those are, that is a lot of peck. Uh, yes, everyone, this is Lou Ferrigno. Indeed, Lou Ferrigno uh, was a great Hercules. He also was the original Hulk in the TV series uh, back in, um, well, a generation ago. And, uh, yeah, even when he competed as uh, in the Mr. Olympia competitions as a professional bodybuilder, he was bigger, just heavier than most of the people out there. At one point, he's competing at around 305. I mean, he's, he's six foot four. So he's, a, he's a big boy. Um, uh, we're going to go ahead and keep going and swipe left. And then we've got, ah, yes, yes, this is what Hercules looked like in the 90s, yes. This is Kevin Sorbo, when, I guess, sort of a dusky, swarthy character, a little bit longer hair, shaven, lots of tan. Okay, um, yeah, we can, we can keep going and swipe left, and then, oh, well, this is a surprise. Yes, quiz skit, quiz sit. Indeed, Ryan Gosling played the young Hercules. I know, very pouty. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's just keep going. Ah, and who can forget? Yes, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Um, <clears throat> indeed. That's all I really need to say about that film. Okay, enough of that. Those are moderni, right, Hercules. But if we were thinking about Hercules in the ancient world, this is what most people in the ancient world, I would argue, would actually conceive of 
when they would think about what Hercules looked like. If I said, paint a picture of Hercules, paint your mental picture of Hercules, this is more along the lines of what it would look like. Older, bearded, and maybe tired. I think this is interesting. It's a different per conception of the hero in general. I often ask my students, in unico vocabulo, describe hunc herculem in hoc pictura. And I get a lot of different responses when you ask. But I think the most common ones are ones like fatigatus, defesus, confusus, contemplans, iratus, cogitans. But I think really focusing on dolens, tristus, and the key word exhaustus, absolutely exhausted. Now, this type, meaning this vision of this older, exhausted Hercules, is a common one. Um, and one of the best places to understand this statue or this type is from what's called the Farnese Hercules. And haec statua um, una ex notissimi statuis erat in orbe antiquo et in aetate reina scentiae. And as I just suggested, a uh, haec statua vocator Farnese Hercules. The statua ex marmore, facta est, it is a maius exemplum alterius veterioris graecae statuae ex aine factae. Very rarely do any of these bronze statues actually survive. What happens is we have, uh, so we know of the survival of these bronze statues from marble Roman copies. Okay, that's what we're looking at now. So, haec exemplum creatum est in saeculo tertio post Christinatum et publicae in Thermis Caracalae apud Romam monstratum est. So it was put in an incredibly public place. If you were a Roman living in the 3rd century uh, AD CE, you would likely have encountered this statue with your own eyes. The statua gigas est, plus quam decem pedes in longitudine, et, that's sort of, no, uh, in addition, in additione, et in podio alto, Stetit, ut populi infra statuam admirantes subspicerent, right? They would have to look from beneath, right? They would have to subspicerent. Hercules in hac statua non est uenis, est adultus, barba maxima et musculis ingentibus, et quamquam fortissimus hic Hercules defesus est et in fuste, a fustus is, will be a common word later, et in fuste reclinat, laboribus iam perfectis. Et in hoc illustratione ab Hendrik Goltzio, duo ad stantes magnitudinem statuae monstrant. We can really get a sense of just how big it is when we see these two fellows, the ad stantes, and they subspicerent herculem, and they're like, that's a lot of beef. Uh, and I will say that in Reddit a couple years ago encountered this illustration essentially trying to delineate almost all of the muscles in the human body based specifically on the Farnese Hercules statue. I've always enjoyed this and we've used it a few times in my classes. Um, a question I often get from my students, sunt ne imagines Heracles uenis, right? So are there any imagines, are there any uh, a forma, are there any formae of a Heracles uenis? And the answer is, imagines Heracles uenis rarae sunt. Praetor, imagines in numis, quae Alexandrum magnum ut Heraclem de Pingunt. Okay, what did I just say? Oh, Alexander Magnus, Alexander the Great, right? He apparet in multis numis, sicut Heracles. Huh. Alexander Magus, uh, Magnus postulavit originem. Huh. Postulavit originem ex Hercule. A symbolum status et potestatis in orbe antiquo. Bene? There's really only one more. Neque uinus, neque vetus, said totus hipster, uh, hic Hercules gigas ex viridi basalte factus est. Right? This is like a giant... 10 foot tall statue made out of green basalt. I mean, this is the wacky material. Uh, in Domo Principis Domitiani, 
in Monte Palatino stated at Yam Est in Museo in Parma. It's a great excuse to go to Parma, um, and you can actually see his really fabulous mutton chops kind of on the side. Uh, and I will say the statue has often reminded my students of Hugh Jackman. Okay. On that note, we will... Yes, oh, I almost forgot. Indeed, um, a couple years ago, my son, we'd been playing a lot of mythology because, you know, that's what I do as a classicist. And my son says, let's play Hercules. And I say, of course, what do you want to be for Halloween? Can I be Hercules, Dada? And I was, absolutely. Uh, and so really one of the best homemade costumes ever. I really built none of it, so I can't take any credit. Um, but I did get to take some good pictures. Okay. Par secunda. Komodo Hercules... Not assessed. Quis est pater Hercules? Quis est mater Hercules? Cur nequese erat Herculi labores facere? Okay, so these are our key questions for the pars secunda. Bene? Pergamus. Hercules est heros graecus. Nonne? Est ne heros romanus? Sic an minime. Minime. Non heros romanus est. Et ubi natus est? Esne Hercules Deus? Seek an minime. Ah, aut fortasse nescius procerto. Si Deus sit, ubi natus est. Bene. Hm. Esne Hercules Filius Ioes et Eunonis? Hm. <laughs> minime. Hercules non Filius Ioes et Eunonis est. Oh. Quis est, fortasse femina mortalis, pergimus. Oh, iterum. That was unexpected. Okay. Hercules Esphilius Ioes et Alcmenae. Hercules known as Philius Ioes et Eunonis. Esphilius Ioes et Alcmena. Jupiter et Alcmena sunt parentes Hercules. Alcmena est femina mortalis. Alcmena non est dea. Non immortalis est. Femina mortalis est. You guys are like, oh yeah, we've heard about this story before. Jupiter and his uh, amat and his feminas mortalis. Indeed, this is another one of those stories. Quis est uxor Ioes? Non acmena. <laughs> acmena ne est uxor Ioes? Haud quaquam. Minime. Quis est maritus alcmenae? Hmm. Habetne, maritu, habetne maritum alcmena? Seek. Okay. So here's our key, here's our key story. Let's read this together. Maritus Alcmenae erat imperator potens. Ex, um, uh, uh, unde, from where? Ex urbe Thebarum. Ah, nomine Amphitrion. Et dum Amphitrion pugnans aberat, it est non ad erat domi, said pugnans ab erat, Jupiter, Solus, relaxans in Kylo, sedens alcmenam weedit. Ah, Jupiter weedit alcmenam et eam valde cupivit. Igitur, Jupiter, simulams formam amphitrionis domum alcmenae intrawit. Oh, et alcmena salutawit maritum, sed non maritum verum erat. Et Jupiter dixit, O oh, mea per pulcra puella, non te vidi multos menses, right? Because I've been uh, aberam pugnans, tum alcmenam visitavit, ad infantem faciendum. Et in hac pictura, possumus videre, sic alcmena visitata est aioe, et infant Hercules natus est. That's the story of his birth. Jupiter visitavit alcmenam in forma mariti amphitrionis. Bene? Constat? Intelligitisne? Monstrata mihi. Bene, pergimus. Okay. Um, a lot of my students then ask, well, what happened when the real amphitrion came home? Quid acidit cum verus amphitrion domum rediret? Apropin quavit uxorem alcmenam et dixit, O oh, mea per pulcra puella non te vidi multos menses, said Alcmena respondit, Quid dicis, marite, tu me visitavisti heri? Okay. Uh, there is, in fact, a Roman comedy, based perhaps on a Greek original by Plautus, called the Amphitruo, in which at one point we have both Amphitryon 
and Jupiter in the Forma Amphitryonis on stage together. And we have one of these comedy of errors that we think of more naturally uh, are as Shakespearean. Uh, but in any case, this we have this uh, in Plautus. And what's truly remarkable is that Jupiter, of course, he wisi tawit Alcmenam, and Amphitryon, he also wisi tawit Alcmenam. And so when Alcmena is ready to give birth, she gives birth to not entirely twins, um, they're kind of stepbrothers, Hercules from Jupiter and Iphicles from Amphitryon. Um, I suppose I, I don't really want to field right now the question of, is this possible? Um, I suppose it's possible, but I'm going to let you think about how that would be. Okay, let's just keep going. Said Utskimus, you know, semper est suspiciosa et invidiosa. Cogitan sibi commodo possum destruere hunc infantem. Nonne? Commodo possum destruere herculem. Infantem productum uh, ex alcmena. Out ab alcmena. Hmm. Huh. Well, this picture is unexpected. What on earth is going on here? Huh. Ubi sumus, sumus in Kylo, non eh? Ah, et, here, let's go back real quick. Et, uh, hmm, quis est? Jupiter, ah, quomodo schemus quisit, aquila ad est, non eh? Et quid habet in unguibus, out uh, pedibus, quid quid, like talons, uh, fulmen. We have multi cupidines, oh, pawus, pawus out pawones, pawi a ah, certe est, you know, Equis est. Huh. Hercules? Fortasse? What's he doing? How on... Why is he with Juno? What is Hercules doing? All right. Let's try to figure this out. Ready? The pictura, this particular pictura, dat nobis e fabulam aetiologicam, related to his birth. And I think after you've worked out the Latin, you'll both be pleasantly surprised and possibly disturbed for at least a day. All right. Let's read this together. Legimus, legamus, a simul. Jupiter, walde sum filium herculem amavit, et itaque, voluit eum fortissimum esse. Fere herculem ex terra ad Olympum constituit. Okay, so Jupiter constituit fere, portare, herculem, ex terra ad Olympum, ut infantulus, lac, Ex mamis siwe uberibus unonis biberet. None? Ut Hercules biberet lac ex unone. Et fortasse fortitudine crescaret. Jupiter igitur tacite et furtim. Du 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 cum infantulo in brachiis, et tum infantem extendit, extendit infantem herculem, ut lac biberet ex unone dormiente, sed, right, here's the problem, sed haica quae calamitas, sed Hercules, quam quam parvulus et infantulus, walde esuriwit, walde esuriwit, as Hercules, non eh? et non bibit, Said uberem siwe mamam unonis momordit Arr, et dea dolore excitata clamavit au oh, au oh, cur quis est hic infant qui meam corpus mordet et cur dea herculem ah bene et cum dea herculem violenter removeret non eh when uh, cum uno removeret herculem violenter lac ex ubere Effluit in Caelum et galaxia nostra creata est. Quid est nomen galaxiae nostrae? It's called the Milky Way. Indeed, what's the Greek word for gala? Or excuse me, what's the Greek word for milk? Gala, right? That's where we get the word galaxy. The word galaxy literally means milky thing. Lock in Latin. Gala in Greek, milk. This is the origin of the Milky Way, the Origo Galaxiae 
Nostrae. Noné? Like I said, you'll be both intrigued and possibly disturbed, uh, but I'm, I can't see your faces right now, and that's probably a good thing. Okay, Pergamos. Said, you know, Alcmenam statim odit, quoque habuit odium herculi. Voluit punire et occidere eum, sed non ipsa potuit facere. Igitur, constituit mitere duo serpente saivos, ad herculem occidendum dum dormiwit. Mm -hmm. Bene, est concilium unonis, mitere duos serpentes. Bene. Itaque, Duo serpentes a unone misi venerunt ad cubiculum alcmenae ut herculem necaret, ut herculem occideret. Non in cunabulo dormie bat hercules, sed in scuto, non eh? Serpentes tempta verunt furtim apropinquare, sed puer hercules e somno excitatus est. Et Hercules quam quam infans fortissimus erat. Hercules audivit serpentes scutum moentes, non eh? serpentes uh, moverunt scutum, sed haud qua quam teritus est. Hercules non per teritus est, cum parvis manibus serpentes prehendens cola magna cum vi compressit. Magna cum vi strangulavit. Sic serpentes apuero ocisi sunt. Yugapai. And we can see many, many depictions of this uh, subject. Uh, this, is, in fact, is called an iconographic type, right? Um, a type basically means uh, a particular way that an image is distributed, and we can see it in a number of different um, examples. We can see these, uh, both a panel as well as a bronze statue. If we go to the MFA in Boston, we can see the Emperor Commodus, who thought that he was perhaps a reincarnation of Hercules as an infant strangling serpents. Um, we look at Albrecht, Albrecht Altdorfer from the Met Museum in uh, New York, an engraving um, of Hercules uh, uh, killing the serpents, right? We got him, the, the Serpentes Misi Ayunone, and Hercules strangulat suffocat compressit cola maxima cum vi. Uh, I can only imagine what would happen when someone said, can you make me a mosaic? Uh, and this is what they received. I mean, that's like baby Hercules has really let himself go. Um, that's enough of that one. Let's get rid of it. Uh, and if you go to uh, Washington, D.C., and you go to the Museo Nationale Historiae Americanae, on the occasion of the centennial of his birth, a statue was commissioned. And this is the statue. It is called the Enthroned Washington uh, by Horatio Greeno. It was completed in 1840. And what can, what can we see? In uh, Her uh, Washington, in forma Ioes sedens in cella regia, cum imagine Hercules serpentes strangulantis in latere sedes, right? On the side of the cella regiae. Of Washingtoni, of, of Washingtoni E, we can actually see this image of Hercules, a symbol of power and a symbol of strength. Not to be outdone by a medal designed by Ben Franklin to celebrate the surrender of the British twice, the surrender of the British at Saratoga in 1777 and also at Yorktown in 1781. And what can we read? Libertas Americana, Right? We have this uh, personificatio, prosopopia libertatis, who's holding a pileus, right? a symbol of freedom. And what do we have on the reverse? We have what appears to be some sort of like a Minerva figure, and uh, she is defended perhaps by Symbola franco gallicae And what do we have? Non sine dis animosus infans, right? Um, and this is a quote directly from the Roman author Horace, living in the time of Augustus. Non sine dis animosus infans. The child... Um, is spirited, but not without the gods. I suppose meaning that God is supporting our undertaking in this case, and Hercules, by strangling the two snakes, is celebrating the victory of Saratoga and Yorktown. Okay. 
Young America rising at the ballot box, strangling the serpents of disunion and secession, right, leading up to the Civil War. Hercules as a symbol. Um, Winston Churchill as a baby talking about, or rather as the baby Hercules, um, the, trying to fight both trade depression and wasteful expenditure. And uh, who is the president? Uh, quis est noster prices ad dextrum latus? Uh, Skisne quisit? Kerte Teddy Roosevelt, who in this case is taking on the serpents of standard oil. And this, of course, from the Pellicula Disneyensi. Hercule serpente strangulat non a unone misos, said a plutone misos, in Pellicula Disneyensi, uh, et in hac Pellicula, Pluto wult superare frater mioem, et serpentes in Pellicula non sunt serpentes, said sunt personificationes, sunt prosopopiae doloris et terroris, pain and panic. Ah, okay, back to the story. So, ubi Hercules ad virum crevit, you know, ad hoc maximum odium Hercule in animo tenens, iterum e nocere temptavit. Okay, Wolu, uh, voluit temptare nocere e iterum. Mm -hmm. Constat? Bene. Furor a you know ne misus descendit in Herculem, et noster heros Factus est amens, terrore et dementia areptus, right, gripped, right, terrore et dementia, casu uxorem et filios jugulavit. Minime. Hmm. Et quid est nomen primae uxoris? Et megara, ex pellicula disneyensi, oh, haut quaquam frater. Well, this definitely changes my view of this film. Quod megaram et filios jugulavit, Hercules voluit se occidere, et suicidium contemplavit, nesciens quid facere deberet. No, no, no. Nesciens uh, quid faciendum esset. Igitur iter faciebat ad Delphos, ad oraculum consultandum, bene, ut oraculum consultaret. Et possumus meminisse um, ex anno facto, right from last year, anno acto. Apollo es Deus prophetiae, et si quis haberet, right, were to have, right, possibly had, a quaestionem magnam, non numquam iter faceret ad oraculum Apollinis apud Delphos ad quaestionem rogandam. It est ut quaestionem rogaret, et ad oraculum consultandum. Et Apollo omnia sciens per oraculum per uh, sacerdos nomine Pythia dabat responsum. And here's what the Pythia said, right? Per oraculum. Hercules, noli te occidere, sanguis tibi neque pollutus est, right? Neque, this is the noun from Necare. Sanguis tibi pollutus est neque. Necese est tibi expiare crimen faciendo labores, right? How can we figure out that expiare is to cleanse? Gives us words like expiate, but it's linguistically related to pietas, right? Necese est expiare crimen, expiare scalos, by doing what? By faciendo labores. You have to suffer. Potesne crimen expiare patiendo. Bene. Hercules potest crimen expiare modo patiendo. There it is, by suffering. Igitur, quod sanguis Hercules pollutus est neque uxoris et neque filiorum, necesse erat Herculi crimen expiare faciendo duo decim labores, et modo laboribus factis sanguis expiabitur. Right? It will be expiabitur. And this is where we get the origin of the original 12 labors, right? We've got the Leohydra Kervus Aper Stabulum, Stabulum, Aves Taurus Equizona Gigas Mala Kerberus. I know it's uh, definitely the way I always learned it. <clears throat> 
not really, but you know what? Hey, I went there. So perhaps when we conceive of Hercules in the ancient world, we see him often at the conclusion of his labors, ones that he had to suffer in order to complete, ones that were brought on by a moment of rage and madness in which he took the lives of his wife and children, and perhaps now he thinks he deserves some rest. So when we think about Hercules in the ancient world, let's think of him as Dolens, let's think of him as Tristus, let's think of him as Confusus, let's think of him as Exhaustus. That's really how he is intended to be seen here. All right. Well, that wraps up our introduction to Hercules. I hope that you've enjoyed the content. I hope that you've learned a lot in the process. And up next will be the labors of Hercules, beginning with the Nebian lion and the Lernian hydra. Again, this is Dr. Z. Walete omnes ad proximum gratias omnibus.